Hey guys, this is Elliot the iPad Pro. Today I'm going to show you how to make a password for your Jupyter website. And then we're going to talk a little bit about security. So in the first video, I showed you how to install Jupyter and then how to do some cool stuff with it. But with one more step, we can have a password that protects your Jupyter website from other people. So how is this done? Well, the first step is to log into your Google Cloud console. And if you don't know what this is, you should really watch the first video right there. So once you're logged in, you then go to Compute Engine, and we're going to create a Jupyter website in Google Cloud, just like how we did in the first tutorial. So we go to Create Instance. Let's name this one Secure. IO and then this is where we add in the computer that already has Jupyter installed under advanced options we click these three buttons we decide the type of hard drive for our computer and we allow HTTP traffic. Now before you click create, like what you would have done in the first tutorial, now we add in a few more commands under the command section for the container. We add the word tiny, we put in the minus G, and then here we put in the word password, all lowercase. And underneath there, you decide what you want your password to be. Now you can't use any quotation marks and you can't use any spaces. So this would be a password that we could use because there's no quotation marks and no spaces. And then we click Create. And now we created our computer that has the Jupyter website and it will be up and running in about 15 minutes. All right, so Jupyter is now running, so let's check it out. So the first thing we do is we copy the IP address and then we go to HTTP colon dash dash the IP address. And this will bring us to the spot where we have to type the password. So we type the password that we just created. After doing that, we'll log into Jupyter. And from there, we can see that it's the exact same environment that we had in the first video. And setting up IO is just as easy as it was before. So creating a password will protect your computer from like people who randomly go to the website or from your like friends who try to hack it or maybe your parents. But it's not going to protect your Jupyter website from like terrorists or from like other governments. So if you have like really important data, let's say a few thousand credit card numbers or military secrets or people's medical information, then you need to create a more secure Jupyter website. But luckily I made a way for you to actually create very, very secure Jupyter websites. And you do that by doing the exact same steps that we did just before, but with one change in a single letter. So let's just repeat what we just did. We'll call this new computer a uh, very secure IO. And then we'll deploy the Jupyter container. Click those three buttons, change the hard drive. So SSDs just run faster, so I usually use those ones. Allow full access. Okay, so then we do almost the exact same command as before, tiny minus G. But now, since we want to protect our computer with a capital P, we put a capital P in the password. 
So password with capital P, and now we create our password, another password. And that's it. We click cre create to create this new computer. And again, this process will take maybe 15 minutes for the computer to spin up. Okay, so now the very secure Jupyter website is up and running. So let's check it out. So like before, we copy the IP address, and this time where you go to is HTTPS, which stands for secure, the IP address, colon, and then socket 80. And you'll get this message that says your connection is not private. It actually is. I'll explain what that message means in a few. But when you click proceed and you go to the next thing, you'll see the website where you can type in your password. And then when you log in, you'll then see Jupyter Notebook. Now one annoying thing about this version of Jupyter is that it does not work on iPad. When you try to open a notebook, you'll get this message that says there's some connection failure with the kernel. But it will work perfectly fine on a desktop, like Mac or Windows. So what's the difference between these two different versions of the secure Jupyter website? Well, one version works on all machines and it's secure, and then another version works on only laptops but it's very secure. And the difference comes down to the fact that the very secure version uses the SSL protocol. And I think that stands for like secure socket layers. And what that means is that both machines have a password so that no bad guy can access them. So imagine you have your Google Cloud, which is running Jupyter, and this is all locked inside of a safe. And then you can use your computer to communicate with Jupiter. Now, a robber down here might not be able to get inside of the safe, but what he can do is kind of wiretap the conversation that you're having with the computer and steal all the messages that you're sending because they're not encrypted. So if you happen to send the password over to the computer, then he can catch that and then he has everything and can access your computer. So the extra secure version of Jupyter stops that by scrambling up all the messages that go between your personal computer and the Jupyter server. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions or like if you have ideas about how you can get the really secure version of Jupyter to work on an iPad, you know, please uh, write it in the comments. I created IO and especially the application IO Online so that everybody who's using Jupyter can be part of a sharing community. And so when you write comments or when you publish your notebooks in IO Online, you're part of that community and you're helping to build a better future version of Jupyter.